Hello guys, I'm James, this is episode 17 and in this episode we are building the pause screen and we're also setting up the basic pause functionality for our game. Let's go straight back into the play scene by opening the play file and when we scroll down we see that we already have a pause subsection created from last time. The first thing we want to do is we want to create all the elements of the pause screen. We do this inside the create pause screen method and the elements are very simply we have a transparent background which is like a veil to give the impression of a paused state and we write the pause text. For the veil we make use of the phaser 3 graphics object. We make it cover the whole screen and we set the alpha value to 0.3. That's like a 30% opacity, so it is transparent. For the pause text, we can make use of our text prefab and we position it in the center of the screen. And when there's only one text on the screen, personally, I feel like it looks better if it's not that center, but slightly above the center, which is why we give it a a vertical offset of 32 pixels. Very important, don't forget these are user interface elements. We have to give it a depth value for the UI to make sure it always covers the game elements. And also we have to make sure that the scroll factor is set to zero. And finally, right after creating the pause elements, we hide them because when we start the game, we don't want to see the pause screen. To show and hide the full pause overlay, we create this toggle pause screen method, we pass it a boolean value to say is it currently showing or not and then we simply set the visibility of all the pause screen elements. Now it's time to look at the click pause method which we created last time. First of all we check if player input is even allowed and we make sure that the game is not yet game over. If it's okay to click the pause button we set the is pause flag and since we can click the same pause button to start and stop the pause, we take the opposite pause flag value. And for showing or hiding the pause screen elements, we can make use of our toggle pause screen method. And if now the game is in a paused state, we start the pause. And if the player stopped the pause screen, then we stop the pause. So what does pausing the game actually mean right now? When we pause the game, simply speaking, we want the player to stop walking and to stop playing the walk animation. In other words, the player stops moving and is now in an idle state waiting for us to resume the game. And when we end the pause, we basically want the opposite thing to happen. So the player should resume walking and continue where he left off. For now, this is all we need for our pause functionality and we can scroll to the play scenes create method and right after we created the UI elements, we can now create the pause screen. Let's go and check our pause screen code. We refresh the browser window and when we want to start the game, everything freezes and checking the console reveals an error. This error is not a big deal. All it says is that the set visible method on our text prefab doesn't exist. That means we go into our prefabs folder and we open the text prefab file. The set visible method is a setter method, so we scroll to the setter subsection and create it. As a reminder, these setter methods are like copying the phaser 3 setter methods that already exist on proper phaser 3 objects. But our text prefab is not a phaser 3 object, it's our own custom class. And so we have saved the phaser 3 bitmap text object inside our text prefab, so we call the set visible method of the phaser 3 bitmap text object here inside the set visible method. Since we're already here in the text prefab adding setter methods, let's also add the remaining setter methods that this text prefab will need later in the game. We have the set alpha method to change the transparency of the full text object. Then we want to change the font size of the text object which changes the text styling and changing the font size also changes the width and height of the text object. Another useful setter method is to change the alignment of the text prefab, especially to make it center aligned. Great, we're done here. Let's refresh the browser window and start playing the game to test the pause button. As you can see, we have successfully implemented the pause feature. We also have a basic pause screen. 
You could of course expand this pause screen with other information like maybe show the, the current distance in bigger text or add button to quit the game or a button to restart the game, whatever you could think of to improve the pause screen. In the live version and Android version of Endless Cave, I have added a button to toggle the sound on and off, a button to continue playing and a button to quit the game. But this right here is all the pause functionality we need for our tutorial. I hope you liked this episode, I hope it was helpful. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And also don't forget to follow me on Twitter to get all the latest updates. Thank you for watching this episode, thank you for sticking with the tutorial series and I'll see you in the next episode. Have a great day, take care, bye bye.